Fintech disruptor Tap Global says its vision is to build a product that can be used by anyone, anywhere, providing instant access to the crypto realm and in the process allowing anybody to enter the market. It also says it sees as one of its aims is to accelerate the adoption of cryptocurrencies by the masses. Well, joining us now here in the studio, two guests from the company at the far end of the table is John Taylor, his chairman, and Arsene Tarossian, who is the founder of, uh, of Tap Global. Let's get on to you first of all, because interesting area of the market. We're talking more about cryptos than we've ever spoken about before. Give us an explanation about what happened, how you brought about the business, and, and how long ago was this? Sure. So thanks for having us, Jeremy, by the way. Um, so the idea of TAP started back in around 2016. My background is development, and then I moved into cryptocurrency brokering. So I ended up having quite a bit of issues with the banks in general in the UK because they would see that I was trading cryptocurrencies. So they would end up like, freezing my accounts, uh, blocking my funds for quite a, uh, quite a while. Then obviously with my developer experience, I thought that there should be a way where we can start automating all of this. And fintechs had just started popping out left and right. And I thought, okay, if I combine a few of the new fintechs with crypto, it would be a financial super app where people can come in, trade their crypto safely, and also off-ramp if they want to. You talk about trading, but it's more than trading, isn't it now, TAP Global? It's a, a wider business model, isn't it? Yes, uh, we've actually expanded our, our business offering as well. We don't only support B2C clients, but also B2B. We saw quite a bit of a demand over the past year, year and a half, from PLCs, from big hedge funds, wanting to enter the crypto market. And they were looking for a solution where one, it wouldn't be putting a risk into their current banking providers because when they saw that, okay, this hedge fund is sending money to Coinbase or, I don't know, Bitstamp, they would flag it as a high-risk client and then they would get shut down. With us, when they come, is we provide individually named accounts or business, uh, business payment accounts. So what happens is it would look like the hedge fund send money to another business account of theirs and they would be able to invest or trade uh, the cryptocurrencies that they needed mm. with bypassing the risk of their main accounts getting closed. Yeah. John, let's, let's bring you in to the discussion as, uh, as, as more of a money man, I think, rather than a, a front of house, sort of how things... What happened that brought about TAP Global for us as an investor? You're on the Aquis market, which is in itself is relatively new and a lot of people still have yet to engage with this. And at IG, we're very lucky to have you in as the first guests from the Aquis exchange to talk about the company. So that, 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 that puts your, your stamp on where we are with all this. Mm. Um, what's your involvement and, and how do you see things developing? Yeah, so TAP Global was listed onto Aquis via reverse takeover, and that was a reverse takeover into Quetzal Capital PLC, which was effectively a SPAC cash shell with just over £3 million of cash in it. Now, our job was to find uh, an exciting early stage tech company that we felt had the ability to scale really quickly. That's what our investors wanted exposure to. So we were induced to TAP around two years ago. We followed their progress uh, very keenly. We were impressed with what they had built, um, and, and with the limited resources that they built it with. So a keen eye on overheads. But we felt there was something special here. We loved the management. Um, and we made an initial £1.5 million investment into TAP and then completed the reverse takeover. So it listed on Aquis on the 10th of, of January this year. Um, why Aquis? Well, Quetzal was on Aquis, first of all. But, but secondly, Aquis, I think, is more permissive of companies which are really at the cutting edge of disruption in sectors like the crypto space and permissive of, of those companies listing in a way that perhaps other markets aren't quite there yet. There was always a really good liquidity in, in Quetzal as a stock and we've seen that continue uh, in TAP since, since it changed its name and, and listed on the, uh, on the 10th of January. So, so we've been really impressed with the market with the assistance that the market's given us to list um, as well. And, and I think that the proposition that we found, let's face it, it was a, a fairly difficult um, macro theme, if you like, crypto as a space when we brought this to market. We'd had Celsius last year, we'd have the FTX blow up just as we were looking to raise money. But we kind of turned that into an opportunity because what TAP has is full regulation. In, in Gibraltar. And I think a lot of people see that now as a flight to safety from all these other platforms. How do they know they're safe 
depositing, mm. trading their crypto or indeed fiat currencies and, and FX as well, which the TAP platform does. Um, and we're seeing a huge influx of, of new users into TAP as a platform for exactly that reason. Yeah, and in fact, I think that influx is through an app, isn't it now? So there's integration, isn't it, with an app? Yeah. Explain how that works and how one might use that. I'm going to get onto the business model in just a minute, but I want to get a bit more of an idea as to how you structured the, the company as an operating business. Yeah, um, so first of all, usually you just go on the App Store, you download our app, then you go for, with a we're very quick um, KYC onboarding, which means you need to provide just name, surname, and some sort of uh, ID and a selfie as well, then... So it's a bit like an ordinary bank account, yeah. I suppose, as much as that. Correct, yes. And then after that, once you're onboarded, you get your uh, prepaid must card. We're actually the first uh, prepaid card program to be approved in Europe uh, back in 2019. Then you also get a payment, a payment account in Euro or GBP, so you get your own sort code account number, again, under your own name, so you can deposit from your mainstream bank into Tub, or you have also debit card deposits, and then you have the ability to start trading any cryptocurrency. Again, we get back to this word trading, but as I say, it is more than that, isn't it? So what else can you do on the app? And what else are you starting to engage with to allow people to use cryptos more broadly? So there is quite a bit of offerings in our product. For example, we have FX. So when users travel, we provide them close to interbank exchange rates. That way they don't get ripped off by going to ATMs around the country or right. POSs. Then we also offer the ability to send third-party payments. So they can actually use us as a replacement to their main bank account. People can deposit crypto, convert it into fiat, and then pay out for their rent, for example. So what is the business model? Where are you taking your profit in all this? So we, our business model is fairly, fairly simple. We make our revenues just from crypto trading or a, a little bit on FX. And that's about it. And a little bit from interchange when people use the Moss card. Before we went into the interview, you were talking to me about some of the other features that you are in the process of offering and can offer. What are those? So one of the main ones, which is a key selling point as well for, for TAP, is we are very transparent in terms of pricing rather than what most crypto companies do where they have just one order book or they control the spread. We actually go to multiple exchanges we've created what we call a smart engine or a middleware where we combine the order books from multiple exchanges and we try to route it in a way where we'll save the customer uh, we'll be able to get them the most amount of crypto for the same amount of money that they're trying to spend Do that, you, are you using artificial intelligence in this how are you adapting to get your clients the best possible it, it, it's clients? actually fully artificial once uh, the middleware decides it just goes and buys bits from every little exchange to give the user the best possible price. Mm -hmm. Let me let me bring up a, a share price chart, John, if I can, to, to talk a little bit more about what happened and what you described. And this vertical red line here um, uh, on the share price is the point at which uh, Quetzal became TAP Global with that reverse takeover. Since then, as you can see, three and a half pence. We're now trading at uh, 4.8 pence a share. Market cap, what, 30, 35, 40 million pounds, yeah. isn't it, at the moment? Yeah, around 35 think, million. On, on, on Aquis. Um, Tell us a little bit more about some of the user numbers and what's happened and, and what you're doing to, in terms of marketing to bring in more people. Yeah, exactly. So as I said earlier, we, we were impressed with what the team at TAP had done on, on a fairly limited budget over the last two to three years. And in it, I think we felt it was key raising money in order to give them more marketing firepower. And they're now using that marketing firepower along with the listing, which has given us um, a lot more exposure, I think, um, as well in terms of credibility and also trustworthiness to the market. The regulation is key to us. The listing helps as well in terms of that, that credibility in, in the wider market. So we completed, as I said earlier, the listing on the 10th of January. Um, we had around about 100,000 users at the time of listing, and we've really seen those numbers grow just within the last three, three to four weeks since listing. So I think that's key in terms of that's the core proposition. Um, and we want to continue to grow those numbers through the, 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 you know, I think deploying the resources now that the company has not had before in the form of that, that cash injection. So not only the cash injection from what Quetzal had um, in the tin as well, but also we raised 3.1 million of, of new money uh, at the point of the listing. So that really gives the company the runway now to, to focus on marketing. And it's a compelling proposition, I think, in, in the wider space that we have this 
regulated platform that, that people can feel safe depositing either their fiat or their crypto um, currency. I was going to ask about the regulation actually. Um, how much of a, of, of a hurdle or, or a, a headwind is it? Uh, you talk about marketing, mm. you talk about the spend you're making, presumably some of that has to go into compliance. Of course, uh, and I think that the, the TAP was set up with compliance in mind from the word go. Now, the reason the company is in Gibraltar is not by accident. When they established the company, they looked for where the most robust regulatory framework was, and Gibraltar was very much it. You know, there is no crypto regulation yet in the UK. You can register with the FCA, but they won't regulate. So that is why the company's in Gibraltar. Um, we've got a very, very close relationship with the, the, the GFSC in Gibraltar over every aspect of, of what we do, and they keep a very keen eye uh, on, on everything uh, in TAP. So it is, it is first and foremost uh, up there in our minds is, is the compliance. Uh, and ensuring that our customers feel safe. Mm. How would you describe the market at the moment in this particular space? Because there are some headlines that don't do the sector particularly well. Um, how do you see your future, given the fact that some companies find it tough? So I think all of those things that, that we've seen in terms of the uh, the operators that have blown up and haven't perhaps been been operating in a way that their customers thought they were operating, a lot of people will see that as a threat. We see it as huge opportunity. And I think that's probably the right time in terms of the wider sector and what's going on to, to pass back to the, the experts in, in Arson in terms of, you know, how do you see the, the, the wider sector in, in crypto and, and why it's an opportunity for TAP? Mm. Well, uh, it is true that there is quite a few bad actors in our industry, but actually just helps our use case. We come in to clean up all the mess that they've created by providing a safe haven for all their users. And hopefully by then coming to us, we try to educate them about, for the bad practices that happen within our industry. And we're, we're very local. For example, we do it over our Telegram, over our Twitter. We try to show them what other practices, other exchanges might be using. So what are you doing as, as a business? Are you just sticking your hand out the window, catching clients as they fall out of other companies' pockets? Because that's essentially what's happening, isn't it? These people have nowhere to go if, they've, if they're within a business that does not working. Or are you looking to integrate someone else's framework and business model into your own? Do you think m and is an option or do you think you'd like to continue to build organically? Uh, both, actually, which is one of the reasons why we want to be listed as well, because we have some potential ideas about acquiring a few companies in order to scale into going in order to go into a hyper growth mode. Uh, but we are also looking to acquire as many customers as possible. Give us an example of what's happening in the crypto space at the moment. We quite often quote Bitcoin as the benchmark, which for whatever reason may or may not be the right way of looking at the crypto, crypto space. Um, but it's finding it difficult to get above the current levels around about 20,000. It's well off the highs, as we know. How do you see the future of that? And how, what's your relationship with the cryptocurrency market? How wide do you go to incorporate other currencies? So in terms of Bitcoin, again, it's regular market. Obviously, we had over the past two years an increase from 3,000 dollars to close to $67,000. Those returns to investors, it's not sustainable. So obviously there was a market crash. And then a few things happened in the crypto space, such as FTX, Celsius, Voyager, and a few other players, which kept the price of Bitcoin dropping down. But on the other hand now, there is quite a lot of money stuck in bankruptcy courts, which means they're out of circulation, which again, hopefully, as the markets recover, Bitcoin price will start going up as well. And in terms of adopting the rest of the crypto market, at least on top, we've got strict policies into which coins we try to support. We have a proper due diligence uh, procedure for that. Uh, we do our research on the teams that created the token, the usability, the technology, uh, as well uh, the tokenomics of it, whether it's a pump and dump, uh, who tries to benefit most of it, uh, will benefit most out of it. So those are the key things that we're looking before we integrate a token in our platform. Mm. So given all that you said, where do you see TAP moving? Well, we are looking to provide more features to our user base that we currently have, but also try to adopt all the other user, uh, users that are leaving other platforms. And hopefully within the next year or two, to be closer to 10 million user base. Optim and that's our optimistic numbers. Yeah, and uh, between then and now, 
what more marketing spend? Do you anticipate organic growth through your um, uh, existing features, or what, what are you going to do to try and build that user base? It's a combination of everything. Obviously, there, we need to spend on the, on marketing, but at the end of the day, our users have come mostly organically. We've spent literally close to nothing in order to grow to a user base of 100,000 because we have a good product, and that's where we don't settle where other crypto providers do. We try to do it the hard way, but at the end of the day, it's if you have a good product, user will come and then they will stay with you. Uh, John, to you for the last question, just to follow up on more of what we do from where we go from here, what are you going to use as the milestones? What should we be checking as investors along the way to ensure that you're on that path to a successful business? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a good question going forwards and, and th there are no official forecasts out yet and, and we will be putting forecasts out to the market uh, in the coming months. What is there is um, we have milestones for the, the board to hit um, for their long-term incentive plan and those are around revenue figures in June 24 and June 25. And, you know, we're looking to make 4 million in June 24 and 8.2 million of revenue in June 25. Now, if you asked Darson that question, I think he would, he would probably tell you that he intends on exceeding those targets by some margin, but, but let's see. Um, so those are, those are key ones to watch out for, uh, as are, I think, the growth in, in user numbers. So there is that organic growth that Arsene's talking about, focusing on what we're good at, on, on what the platform does at the moment, and growing those user numbers from 130,000 towards you know, a million in the short to medium term as well. And then I think there'll be increased um, usability, increased um, capability of the platform as well, added features. We recently announced that we're now doing cards as a service. So we will white label a card for exchanges like Bitfinex, you know, hundreds of thousands of users um, who can now get a MasterCard, but TAP does all the back end work and will be, it's another revenue stream for us. And, and there are all sorts of ideas the team has to increase that capability and broaden out the, the revenue streams coming into the platform. So, look, you know, the sky's the limit and the ambition is, is certainly there. Um, so I think it's a very exciting story going forwards. Well, look, gentlemen, thanks so much indeed for joining us. It's been great to uh, get your thoughts on what's happening at TAP Global. That's John Taylor, Chairman, and Arsene Tarossian, who's the founder of the company TAP Global, a business out of Quetzal that came to the market earlier this year on Aquis.